If you're a bunny mom or a guinea pig dad or anybody who purchases hay on a regular basis for a little one, you've probably become a little bit of hay connoisseur. And along that way, you've probably either purchased or heard a little bit about different hay cuttings. Today, I wanna to take the opportunity to talk to you about hay cuttings and help you really truly understand the implications to what it means in terms of the hay quality characteristics as well as the nutritional factors. Most importantly, what I wanna do is take some time to help you separate fact from fiction. So what are hay cuttings? In order to understand myths versus reality, let's spend a little bit of time helping you understand the science of how hay grows and how that relates to cuttings. Hay is a crop that can be harvested multiple times a year. And no matter what type of hay we're talking about, whether that be cool season grasses like Timothy and Orchard, warm season grasses like Bermuda, or even legumes like alfalfa, they are naturally harvested at different points during their maturation cycle. When we talk about cuttings, that's simply assigning a number to a cutting. First cutting would be the first time the hay is cut each year, whereas second cutting would be the second cut. It's most commonly to get one to two cuttings and rarely with some grasses, we will get a third cutting. So one of the most common questions that I get as a veterinarian is what cutting is most nutritious or most appropriate for my animal? Whether that be a young rabbit or an older guinea pig, is there a difference between first, second, and even third cuttings that aligns to a specific nutritional need? And that's certainly out there in the marketplace. So what is the reality? The reality is, is that there is no scientific research that validates that certain cuttings of hay are more appropriate for certain age-related issues or certain disease conditions, such as GI disease or dental disease. Another claim I occasionally hear from pet parents is that second cutting hay is actually a higher quality than first cutting. Well, the truth around that is that's really a myth, a little bit based on consumer perception, and unfortunately there is some marketing out there that really aligns that second cutting is better. Now, there can be certainly differences between first and second cutting, and sometimes second cutting can be a little bit softer and greener, but when we really get down to the root of it, what we wanna focus on is the maturity of the hay. There are different physical structures that we look for, whether it's leaf to stem ratio, whether it's the side of the seed head, whether it's the maturation. It really is not about the cutting whatsoever. If we evaluate those physical characteristics and most importantly, we align that to the nutritional factors that we are after, cutting really isn't a primary differentiator and not something you should make your purchase decision based on. So another common question is that adult animals prefer a second cutting hay. Well, regardless of cutting, what it really comes down to is what your individual animal is after. Some animals certainly like a hay that is slightly more coarse, a little bit more mature, a little bit crunchier, whereas other individuals prefer a little bit of softer hay. It is not truly about cutting, it's about those physical characteristics that your animal would prefer. What we really wanna focus on is ensuring that independent of cutting, we are getting that soft leaf, that tender uh, structure, that beautiful aroma, and making sure that that aligns to the right nutritional characteristics to feed the microbiome in their hindgut. As you can imagine, we've spent a huge amount of time and effort at Oxbow trying to understand what are the nutritional and physical characteristics of hay that most align to a hay, independent of cutting, that is appropriate for small herbivores. What we've learned is that we focus on maturity and specifically harvesting hay at an early maturation state, not letting hay get overly mature. So again, it's not specifically about the cutting, it's about the physical characteristics as well as the nutritional characteristics. And because we focus on an early maturity cut, we can align that in every single bag. So we've spent a lot of time talking about the nutritional characteristics and the physical characteristics that we know align to what's the best for the small herbivore. At Oxbow, what we realized really early on is that once that hay leaves the field, there are still a lot of things that we have control of that can allow us to improve and add value to that hay. What we've done is learn from this experience and we've developed what we call our extra acre hay process. This again starts in the field with the quality evaluations that we do there, but it follows the hay all the way through the packaging and into that final package. It's about not simply buying hay. It's not simply looking at hay in the field, but really understanding what we can control as we move that through our quality system. There's four central pillars to Oxbow's extra acre quality process.
So pillar number one for us is our ongoing research and consultation with hay growers. We are continually looking at what research is being published and what information is out there to improve our ability to cultivate healthier fields and more nutritious hay for small animals. We dedicate significant time, effort, and money into researching quality factors that impact the pet's total well-being. Our forage experts work hand in hand with researchers and growers, continue to learn and evolve the way that we grow and package hay. Pillar number two is presence in the hay fields year around. With constantly having boots on the ground, we're constantly able to evaluate the growing characteristics of hay, what the environmental conditions are, as well as what the soil conditions are that all impact the quality characteristics of the hay. That allows us to understand what's going on in mother nature and how we can utilize science to improve the quality of that hay. We employ farmers as part of our forage sourcing team to ensure that we're sourcing only the best hay from the best farmers in every given year. Pillar number three is really focused on our assessment and our scoring of hay. Before we ever buy hay, we understand what's been going on as part of that growing process. Our sourcing team evaluates that hay in the field and in the bale to collect samples, scoring it on a variety of factors. Color, smell, aroma, different leaf to stem ratios, and other quality characteristics. In addition, we're sampling that hay and submitting it for third-party testing to evaluate a massive diversity of nutritional factors, including fiber and protein and other nutritional characteristics that we know are a paramount for the health and well-being of small animals. After assessing the quality of the hay each year, we evaluate all the hay that is available and only select the most nutritionally appropriate and that hay that has the quality characteristics that we're after. Once back at Oxbow, the hay undergoes another round of sampling to further validate that scoring and assessment that was done in the field, as well as to validate the third-party nutritional testing. All of that analysis in totality allows us to know that we're putting the most consistent, most nutritionally appropriate hay in the package every single day. And finally, pillar number four, sorting and packaging of hay. We use a variety of custom-built technologies that we've developed over decades of packaging hay to softly separate the bale and, and de-dust the hay through multiple processes before it is then hand-sorted and hand-packaged by a real person who has a commitment and a passion for what they do. 